Hi everyone, Rich Crescenti here with another in our series of videos making music with Melodyne. And today we're going to have another in our mini series within there focusing on Pro Tools and Melodyne Essential. Pro Tools and Pro Tools Ultimate are now bundled with Melodyne Essential. Now in the first video that we did right here, we talked about how to put Melodyne on track and also how to transfer that audio in so that you'd be capable uh, and ready to edit it. And today that's what we're going to be focusing on. We're going to focus on this main Melodyne window, how to navigate within that window, and some basic editing to get you started. So let's dive right in and take a look at this window right here, right? We're looking at our lead vocal track. This is the one I have selected. And as you can see right here, there's a, a grid, both vertical and horizontal grids. And we're going to talk about those in a minute. I want to talk about how to navigate around and see the whole song right here. So first up, on my mouse, I have a scroll wheel. So with a scroll wheel, you can scroll up and down to change what you're seeing right here. If you hold down shift, you can scroll side to side in the timeline. Now, if you don't have a scroll wheel, there's a couple of other ways that you can do this, or you might prefer to scroll in a different way. First up is along the bottom, we have a menu that shows the waveform for the whole song right there. And there's this gray bar. So you can grab this gray bar and move through and change what we're focusing on. That allows you to navigate by scrolling. We can also zoom horizontally that way, in and out. On the right hand side, we have the exact same thing, except this deals with our vertical orientation, which regards in, or relates to pitch. Here we can do the exact same thing. We can scroll up and down, or by grabbing the ends of that bar, you see it becomes a magnifying glass, we can change the way that we zoom vertically. Another option is to right click and use the context menu. So if you see I right click right here, we have our main tool. We also have a scroll tool and a zoom tool. So I can come to the scroll tool and move around that way, or I can right click and go to the zoom tool and zoom in and out that way as well. Let's go back to our main tool right here. Okay, so lots of ways to navigate and move around in the session and find where you wanna go. If you want to, a very cool trick that you can do, for example, if I don't have a track soloed and I press play, now do you know the situation? we hear the whole song. But if you just click in the timeline right here in Melodyne, now do you know the situation? we could just focus in on that vocal that we're listening to right there. You can also click now do you know anywhere in the grids and find that as well on the main edit window, excuse me. Okay. So now that we've learned about navigating within there, let's talk about the grids that I was talking about earlier. And Melodyne works with two different grids. We have a timing grid and a pitch grid. Now, most all of you are gonna be very, very familiar with the timing grid if you've ever worked in any DAW before. And a lot of DAWs have a grid edit mode. And you know this makes separations and constrains your movement to that exact grid quarter notes, whole notes, eighth notes, however you want that grid to be set up. If we look at this right now, we can see that we have this based on bars and beats. Here's bar 12, or here's bar 12, here's bar 13. And over here on this right hand side, this right here is our time grid settings. So we see a picture of eighth notes right there and you can actually see that this grid is split up into eighth notes. If you click on this little triangle next to it, you get a whole menu selection of options of how we want those grids to be based out. So if I want these grids to be based on quarter notes, I can select that right there. And now we see quarter notes. Turning the grid on and off is as simple as clicking on this button right here. When you see this white outline around this, that means the grid editing is, is on. Your grid settings is turned on. So let me go to eighth notes and turn that on and show you how this works. Let's say I wanted to move some of these notes right here. Another quick key to show you is command option. When I do that, we get the uh, magnifying glass again, another way to zoom in and zoom out. So let me select all of these notes. And if I grab these notes and try and move them, you'll notice they're moving in terms of the grid. That's because we have this grid setting on right there. If I turn this grid off, I can now move those notes and just gently coax them wherever I want that to go. A pro tip for this is that if you have the grid settings turned on, you can use the Alt or Option button to temporarily override. So even though I have grid turned on by holding down Option, I can move just a little bit right there. 
Very, very useful stuff. Okay, the same thing holds true with stretching in between two notes, right? You'll notice this note right here, he swings up into a different note right there. So if I come to my timing tool, which I'll, I wanna point out for a minute how these editing tools work, right? If I hover over the center of this note, this is what we call a blob in melody. If I hover over the center of it, we get the main tool. If I go towards the beginning or towards the end, we get our timing tool. If I go up into the top portion, we get our note separation tool. I'm gonna to come back to that in just a little bit. So let's come over here to my timing tool and you'll notice that I can change that, but it's according to the grid right there. The way these notes move is because of what's called a soft separation between them. And this is for done for specific reasons. There's no way that in a, in a natural vocal performance, two notes would overlap. So if I change the timing of the note, it will change the timing of the note before it, or in some cases, the note after it as well. So this is done on purpose. This is called a soft separation. And later on, I'll go in how to change that if you want to. But I want to understand that that timing follows that grid as well. However, we can still hold down option and temporarily override that if you want to change this phrasing a little bit. Okay, that covers our timing grid. Now let's move over here and take a look at our pitch grid. Much like the timing grid, this is a grid but just for pitch, not for timing. And it's the same idea. When the white outline is around the clef right there, that grid setting is on. So let's take a look at this menu. This menu has two controls right here. Snap, which I'm gonna come back to in just a moment, but also this background section right here. This background is how these notes are displayed. So for example, if I set it to keyboard, it looks like a piano keyboard. White notes are white, and the gray notes represent the black keys on a keyboard. If I switch to key, then you'll see this key of this song is G major. We will now see the white notes are the notes that are in the key of G major. These gray notes are notes that are not in that key. We can also switch to chord, which shows you the various chord maps based on there and what notes are would be in that chord that's played at that moment. We can look at chord scale, which takes into account both the key and the chord scale. And then we can look at pitch lines, which instead of giving you an overall sense of the note, this gives you a line exactly in the center of that note. Just another way to look at it right there. All right. So let's go back to key for a moment, being in the key of G major right here, and I wanna talk about moving these notes. Now, this pitch grid is on right here. If I turn this off, I can move this note just up or down a little bit as we see fit. Maybe you wanna hear that note while you're changing it, so let's take a look right here at this options menu. This options menu has a lot of different ways to change how the information is displayed, but also want to ch change how it's heard. When you see monitor when editing blobs, if I turn that on, when I try and change a note, we hear that note as it's changing. Now, I don't want that on right now, so I'm gonna turn that back off. Okay, now we don't have this grid on. So for a moment, I wanna talk about snap, which is when the grid is on, and I'm gonna go to chromatic snap. So you can set your chromatic snap, uh, you can set your snap to chromatic or to the background snap. For example, we are in key, so this is key snap. If we had this set to chord, we would have the option of chord snap. That snap would pertain to the background rules that we've set right there. I wanna go back to key, and I wanna set this to chromatic snap to show you how this works. Now, chromatic snap is gonna be based around half steps. Okay, so if I grab this note right here and move it up, you'll notice it only moves up in half steps at a time. I wanna point out also that you'll see it didn't move exactly to the note because it wasn't exactly on the note to begin with. So if you wanna move it to the note, the fastest way to do this is double click. If I double click on this, it goes to this note and now we can go exactly by half steps and go exactly to a note each time. The same thing holds true with option right here where I can click on it and just gently go up or down a little bit. Okay, now this covers how we can very, very, exactly and purposefully move the timing of notes and move the pitch and change the alteration of these notes as well. But sometimes we need a little bit finer control. So I wanna go to, I'm gonna go to bar 66 right here and show you something that I wanna show you which is about note separation. Let's take a look at this note right here. Now, earlier I mentioned these are called blobs. This line that travels through these blobs represents the exact pitch that is being sung 
and the blobs represent the note that Melodyne is interpreting that as. Right? For example, a lot of these swing up and down, but Melodyne will look at this note and say, this note right here is actually a G. So even though it's swinging up and down a little bit, that's a G they're trying to sing right there. Okay. So now sometimes I, if I see a swing up like this, I might want a little bit finer control over it. Let's give this a listen. Here, really swing up into that B, that word B right there. To get a little bit finer control, I may want to separate these. So again, if you hover over the note in the top portion, you get the separation tool. So where I see that note really start to swing up right there, I can double click and it swings up to this note right here. And now I see it swing up again after that, I may decide to do another separation right there. And it pops up there. Okay. So now I can double click on that and move that to the note I want. Double click there, double click there, and double click there. And now we get Wanna be no the same swing up, but now it's swinging exactly to the notes that are in the key of that song right there, the way I want that to behave. Okay, great. I'm going to show you guys something really cool right here, which is great for dealing with vibrato inside of this. Now, for vibrato, we're going to do something a little different right here. I'm going to click on this note and you'll see this. And this is where I'm going to introduce you to something new that is called note assignment mode. When you see this blob selected right here, this is our edit window. And this is where we go in to make all of our editing changes. But there's also a mode that's called note assignment mode. And note assignment mode is where you tell Melodyne how to interpret the data that's in there. So if you're ever having a problem, something isn't quite sounding right, something is a little off, or you want to change the way that Melodyne understands this information, this is done in note assignment mode. Let me give you a good example of this right here. We see the singer hitting this note, and then it drops down an octave and then goes back up to here. You'll see this hollow point right there. This, because this is pretty gritty and there's a lot of gravelly singing right there, sometimes it makes it a little harder for Melodyne to determine the pitch. And it's saying this is an alternate position. It's saying it thinks it's this, but it could also be this one right here. Based off this vocal, the way it's around those notes, I think it actually should be this right here. So I think Melodyne is interpreting this incorrectly. So I can just double click on that and get that note in there perfectly. Okay. Now, what I wanted to show you in here was a feature that's called separate as trills. And this only works on notes that have a lot of vibrato like this one. But if you click on this, now inside our context menu, which is different in note assignment mode, I can right click and come over here to my note separation and we see separate notes as trills. Watch what this does. When you do this, this separates your vibrato into the parts where it swings up and the parts where it swings down, giving you really fine control over that. Now I can go back into my edit menu and let me zoom in a little to make this a little bit better right here, a little bit easier to see. I can now hover over all of this and let's say I want to add one, right? The command key allows me to add a note to a selection or subtract it from there. I can take that and I'm going to turn my uh, pitch grid off and I'm going to slide these up just a little bit and then double click on them and that set those all to the exact same note. I'm going to select these and double click. Now we see we've got some vibrato, some that's in the note, in the key and then some that's not. So now what I could do is very easily decide to take these top notes and these bottom notes all the same right there. Once again, that's the command key. And I could slide these down so that they're all within that note. Maybe I want to just take these top ones and then slide them down. And now what I've got is vibrato that is totally constrained exactly to that note right there. So we get... This gives you really nice exacting control over on how far that note swings up and down. And it's a really nice for vibrato, really, really great control over this. Okay, one more really nice pro tip that I want to show you that goes back into note assignment mode. Let's go back to the beginning of the song right now. And I want to show you this right here. Sometimes we may want to move some notes. And because, again, because of the way that Melodyne works, it sees notes as being connected. And this way it stretches those notes. For example, let's say I select all of these notes right here. And then I'm going to turn off my timing grid. Let's say I move these notes, right? You'll notice it's stretching them out right there, and it's not really moving them. And that's because they're all selected, but also because of this, this separation right here. This is a soft separation, so it's seeing all these together. 
if I wanted to just move these, right, what I need to go do is go into note assignment mode and come to this separation right here. Come to my context menu and choose separation type tool. This will change it from the soft separation that it is right now. You see this vertical line. If I double click on it, now we see two flags above and below. Now that views that as a hard separation. Okay, so now when I come back over here to my edit mode, I can select all of these and move them, and now it moves them. It's no longer stretching them out because that is, there's no soft separation. That's a hard separation right there. A great way to control whether we want something stretched or whether we want it moved. I hope you've enjoyed this editing tips today. Thanks.